Hi guys and welcome to lecture 9 of Python programming with me, Mace. So in this lecture we're actually going to be, like uh, I said in the last video, that we'll be starting a whole new chapter on loops, but I've just decided to combine the loops chapter with the conditions chapter to make it more readable. So yeah, this is going to be the one video we're going to be doing on loops. So what are loops? Uh, many of you already know this, the loop a loop iterates through something so say you have this for loop i'll teach the syntax later in the video so for x in range um uh, 10 um uh we'll do print x minus one okay now if we run this Oh, I'll just save it as lect eight. So it goes minus one, zero, minus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, I didn't mean to do that. I'm just going to do x plus one. Okay, now if we run it. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So. It iterates 10 times and it prints 1 to 10. Like, you don't have to individually print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It does that for you. And if we change this number to uh, 10,000 and we run it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, whoops, I'll move it up. And it keeps on going. It keeps on going. So yeah, that, that's going to print to 10,000. It will take a while. But the point is, for loops make it way easier to do whatever you want to do. Because you don't have to repeat everything manually yourself. Let's not do x squared 10. So, this is only one of the types of loops we could use. We could also do another loop called the while loop. So while... Oh wait, let's just create a variable, x equals, um, what about 100, okay, while, oh, oh, and we'll do y equals 0 as well, so uh, you'll see what I'm doing, while x, I mean, while y is smaller than or equal to x, so we learnt these operators in the if, and it's literally the same. While x is smaller than or equal to, actually, I don't really need to do that. Oh, whoops. Print y. Okay, now if we run it. Okay, so it continues printing zero. Why is that? So unlike the for loop, um, in the for loop, it, every time it iterates through this x will, actually let's just neaten this up, yeah, this x will automatically go up, however in this one, we need to go y equals plus equals 1, and we learned this before, it just adds 1 to the y, but it doesn't just add 1, it changes the value of y to y plus 1, so now if we run it, okay, Okay, now you'll see that it keeps on going to 87. But you can see it just goes 9 to 10. That's our previous for loop. So if you're just wondering. And then it starts again here. So those are our two types of loops. While and for. And you might think, well, you know, for looks more automatic and it's better. But you know, while loop is also um, really useful. So if we do while true. Remember, this is Boolean. And we do um, uh, print y y plus equals one and if we do run it this is going to keep on going forever literally forever you can see that it's going to 231 260 300 it just keeps on going so what while loop does it will keep on going until a certain condition is met and that condition is what we write here so while true we'll just keep on going um, whereas in for loop, when we're flexible, we can choose 
how many iterations it goes through and um, when it stops. So those are our two loops. Now we'll actually go through for loop in more detail. So we got our four, then we put x. So x is what we use to count the loop. Every iteration x increases by one automatically. Though. It automatically increases by one. Actually, yep. So it increases by one every time and it keeps on going to 10. So in range 10. Yep, you can also do this. 6 to 10. And if we do run, you'll do 6, 7, 8, 9. So what that did, of, um, because the reason it didn't print 10 was because we didn't put x plus 1. Um, so it went from 6 to 10. So we can do just 10 for now. And that will just give us the how much we're going from. So that will always start at 0. Then we put our semicolon. We put a semicolon. Uh, just like we did in if. And then we do the uh, print. So, or whatever we want to do inside. So, print x. If we run this. Um, you see that it starts at 0. And that's because for loops they automatically start at 0. If we wanted to print starting at 1, you would do x plus 1. Because if we run it now. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because the first time it iterates, it prints x plus one, so it does zero plus one. Second time, it does one plus one, which is two, and it keeps on doing it going all the way to ten. So that's your for loop, and that's just the simplest thing you can do inside a for loop. Now let's actually look at what else you can do inside a for loop. Okay, so let's pretend we uh, uh, we there's this uh string that we want to do. Let's do my string equals hello my name is mace and now we want to what we want to do now is we want to go through each of these and print something out for each letter so what we would do is range length so when we go to our data structures we're going to be learning about dictionaries tuples lists and that's when len really comes in useful and when we can't do uh, functions so we'll do len my string and now what it's going to do instead of range 10 it's going to iterate through my name is mace and it'll stop when it gets to the end of the string which is the e now we want to print oh whoops now we want to print my string but if we just do print my string it's going to do hello my name is mace so you want to print the one like uh, the one character that is being looped through so we do square brackets x so it looks that it looks at the x x it sounds weird it looks at the x character in my string so right now x is zero so it looks at the zeroth character which is h next time it loops through X will be 1. So we'll look at the first character. I mean first in computer, not the actual first. So that will be E. And it will keep on going. My string X. And we also want to, uh, so we want to do more than that though. We want to do my string X plus. So now we want to concatenate. Um, uh, wait, wait. we got to do one more thing. String. Because remember you can't concatenate int to string. So you're going to do string my string. Yes, yeah, string my string. It's weird. But my string, so yeah, string my string. So then you do plus the what we want to do. So we want to do just a semicolon, and then we want to print x plus one. And now if we run this, run module. Okay, actually, we didn't even need to do string. Oh. You can only concatenate string to string. And that's because I put this in the wrong place. Whoops. And we have to put string here because remember, as I said before, we can only concatenate string to string. Okay, so minding that, if we run it now. Yeah, okay. H equals 1. So it's the first because... 
Remember, we're going through H, which is 1, then E equals 2, L equals 3, the other L equals 4, O equals 5, the uh, comma equals 6, uh, the space is 7, and it keeps on going all the way to E, which is 22. So that's just concatenating through the string. However, what if we want to do even more? What if we want to go if statement? So we already know if. If um, my string, if my string x, so what is the most uh, occurring um, digit in here? Let's go at e. If my string x equals e, right? Oh, whoops, that's a semicolon. Then we want to go and print something special. Print, um, hi, this is an E. But what if we want to, oh, whoops, I put, oh, yep. But what if we want to go, if this is not an E, we don't, uh, if this is not an E, we want to do something as well. So what we're doing right now is nesting inside a loop. So if my string x equals, and what is the least occurring? Uh, it's probably going to be C near the end as well. If my string equals C, we want to stop the loop. How do we stop the loop manually when a condition is met? Because if this condition is never met, then it won't stop the loop. So if this condition is met, and it will be met, if else my, oh, whoops, not else. <laughs> LF, my string equals C, we do break. Now what break does, oh, whoops, that's, what break does is it breaks the loop. It will stop the loop immediately. So if you run it, hi, this is an E, hi, this is an E. So it prints your two E's, which is here, and here and then it sees that uh, and then it does the i is it either of those no it keeps on going s either of those no nope, keeps on going m either of those nope keeps on going a same thing c however it will do this and it breaks it would have printed that last e oh whoops let's just open that up again that last e over there at the end of mace it would have done another hi this is an e but it didn't because it broke the loop loop at the uh, when, when it saw the c so that's break. You can also do continue, which just does nothing really. It just continues the loop uh, wherever you're up to. So there might be a bunch of code here. Say uh, there could be code saying print x plus one, uh, but it won't do that. It will just, uh, but it, but it will do that. Sorry, it won't print anything else here. If we put print hi let's have a look at this run run module okay oh whoops syntax error oh why do i keep doing that okay da, 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 da. okay now if we run it hi this is an e okay this time however it does hi this is an e instead of printing that so you can see here that it does elif my string and then it prints x plus one at the end which means it did actually print up to 22 however it did one this uh, the high this is an e two and it kept on going like that so that's continue so now that we've gone through four loops and nesting inside four loops we can do the while loop and the while loop is less flexible but it's uh it's still used because you can uh, we'll go over it in further videos. Okay, while x equals true. I mean, while my string. And what do we want to do? While my string um, x. Oh, yeah. But the thing is, it won't automatically change each time. So what we need to do is x equals 0. So while my string x not equal to... Um, uh, let's see. Uh, let's do S this time, not equal to S. Print my string.
Okay. And one more thing we're going to do, however, is my string x. If we keep on doing this, it will be zero. Let's check this. Let's have a look. Name s is not defined, not equal to s. Oh, whoops. Um. Uh, do, do, do. Okay, that's better. <laughs> Weird. Okay. So just pre continuous printing h because we never change the value of x. However, if we do this, x plus equals one module. Okay. It goes hair, hair. Okay, that's because we did the equals plus plus equals one. There we go. This time, it will keep. It will do it. Hello, my name is Mace, uh, but it doesn't do is Mace because it sees the I, then it sees the S, and it breaks the loop. So. This time, instead of having to do break inside the loop, it automatically identifies. So this while loop will continue going until a condition is met. The for loop, however, will continue going until whatever you entered in the for loop is met. So uh, we can actually, it's more flexible in for loops, but while loops will continue going until the condition you put in is met. So that just about wraps it up for uh, this video and uh, we'll see you in the next video where we're going to be going over functions and um, in the next chapter, this time for real next chapter, we'll be going over functions which you've seen me use quite a lot with the def this function and that's just the syntax we use. Yeah, you've seen you've seen me do it like uh, in earlier videos, but this uh, we'll actually go over what you can do with functions and how they're really useful for your code. So we'll see you in the next video. Bye.